Hello, this is Hannah, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. Each episode focuses on a topic to do with personal development and self-growth. For more information about Becoming Who You Are, you can look at the website, which is at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also email me with your questions and comments at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. If you've been to the Becoming Who You Are website, you'll have seen that the tagline says, A Guide to Authentic Living. I thought I'd talk a bit about authenticity and what it actually means for us in our lives. Authenticity is, put simply, being yourself. You might also hear it described as being genuine, open, congruent and natural. When I was trying to think of a way to describe this accurately, I found it very difficult. It struck me that this is because authenticity is difficult to define, because everyone is different and therefore everybody's authenticity is different. The definition I find most helpful comes from Carl Rogers, who is the founder of the person-centered approach. This is a type of therapeutic approach and a life philosophy in its own right. In his book, On Becoming a Person, which I highly recommend, he describes congruence as The feelings the therapist is experiencing are available to him, available to his awareness, and he is able to live these feelings, be them, and able to communicate them if appropriate. Although this quote is primarily aimed at therapists, for me it applies to the way that we are in our real lives. I want to comment on a couple of things about that definition that really strike me and I think are really core to authenticity and to living authentically. Firstly, it's about being aware of our feelings. The quote describes feelings as being available, which means we have to be open to them, whatever they are. A key part of authenticity is exploring our feelings, uncovering those we might have repressed because they weren't acceptable or left us feeling very uncomfortable, and being open to them. I believe this last part, about being open to them, is really crucial. We all have different relationships with each of our feelings and it's quite tempting to ignore or repress unwanted or inconvenient feelings sometimes. If we've been taught that certain feelings aren't acceptable to express, for example, anger or hurt, it might be the case that we don't even recognise these feelings anymore when they're present. Instead, we bury them under the surface, either covering them with other, more acceptable feelings or denying their existence altogether. For example, if you're a woman, and if you've been raised like a lot of women, to associate anger with masculinity and to view it as something that's very unfeminine, when someone says something unjust or treats you in an unfair way, you might find it easier to identify with feelings of, for example, being hurt rather than feelings of anger, when anger could be a totally healthy response to a situation in which you've been wronged. Part of becoming who we are is to look at our relationships to our feelings, to give each feeling a say and to listen. To quote the author Sark, it is to sit with your emotions and to say to each one, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. I see you, I hear you, I feel you. We're capable of having rich emotional experiences, which is a gift. Some of these might be uncomfortable to sit with, but they carry important information about people, situations, and most importantly about ourselves, about our judgments and our beliefs. The second part of the quote I'd like to focus on is the idea of communicating our feelings, if appropriate. This is about having boundaries. Boundaries are so important. They protect you and your internal world from people who might not treat it very well, and they protect others as well. Boundaries are about respecting your and other people's personal space and about them respecting yours in return. If we don't have any boundaries, there's no sense of separation between where our world ends and another person's begins, and this can leave us feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed. The very nature of boundaries makes it sound like having them in place will distance us from other people. Although it's counterintuitive, Having boundaries actually increases the level of intimacy possible in relationships. When we have boundaries, our world is separate from the other person's. We're in complete control of how much we share with them and how much we choose to receive in return. Having boundaries helps us feel safer in our interactions. 
because we're able to protect and take responsibility for our inner world. So being authentic isn't necessarily about sharing everything. Part of developing authenticity is about working out what our boundaries are, where we end and other people begin. If we don't feel safe around certain people, part of being authentic is to trust that, not to think, well, I'm trying to be authentic, so I guess I should share everything with this person anyway. In that situation, being authentic would be to notice that we don't feel safe, to think about why that might be, and to try and find out more about that feeling, to be curious with ourselves. Sharing is about trust, and people have to earn our trust. In being authentic, we have no obligation to share our thoughts and feelings with people 100% of the time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. When we are authentic, we have complete control over what we share with whom. Other people might have expectations, but we don't have to fulfill them. If we feel pressured to, we can just notice that we feel pressured to without necessarily acting on it. Authenticity starts at home. It starts with us, with being aware, open to ourselves about how we feel and with honoring and respecting our feelings. We can't be authentic with other people until we're authentic with ourselves. That's why self-awareness and communication are so crucial to becoming who we are. There's no sense of change with authenticity. Rather, it's about getting to know what we already have, deepening our awareness of our existing experience and learning to accept that. I want to finish this podcast with a poem by David K. Reynolds, the founder of a movement called Constructive Living. Before I move on to that, I wanted to mention this week's resource again. I spoke about it earlier, and it's a book called On Becoming a Person by Carl Rogers. This is my first introduction to the person-centered philosophy and its ideas, and it had a profound effect on the way I think about myself, think about others, and think about my relationships. Carl's writing is incredibly warm, and his positive regard for humanity is really uplifting to experience. So I thought this poem fit the topic of this episode really well, as it beautifully echoes the experience of living authentically within ourselves, and describes with real eloquence the rich experience of being open to all our thoughts and feelings, and being authentic with ourselves. This is called To Be Alive. Because we live, we have desires and hopes. Because we have desires and hopes, we have fears of failing to achieve them in the future and memories of having failed to achieve them in the past. How can we cope with the reality that our desires and dreams always extend beyond our abilities to attain them? No amount of effort works satisfactorily. No direct approach to the problem succeeds. We hit the dead end of impossibility. What is there to do? The remarkable key is to give up on trying to solve the dilemma altogether. In other words, we recognize the discrepancy between what we want and who we are, what we can achieve, and accept it. We recognize the feelings of anxiety and inadequacy that come with living and accept them. There is no need to fight, no need to wish life would be otherwise than it is. We are just fine as we are. Once, not really once, but over and over again, we recognize the naturalness of this reality of discrepancy. We can go about directing our attention and efforts towards doing what is possible We can begin to live realistically and constructively within the limits and potentials that life offers us. There has been no problem all along, except for the one we created in our minds. There is only a naturally expansive set of desires, a naturally limited set of abilities to achieve them, and a pressure to achieve all of them. To be alive is to need, to succeed and to fail, to be sometimes anxious and sometimes confident, sometimes regretful and sometimes satisfied. Life is just fine like that.